When I was asked to write a sermon blurb to send out in the Wednesday newsletter about this sermon, I said it'll be five parables in 15 minutes. And I got an urgent message uh, from Patrick later that day that said, could you make that four parables in 12 minutes? <laughs> so I, I, I am going to do my best I can. The, the parables of Jesus, some of them are allegories. We've had a couple of them that have allegorical interpretation given right in the Gospels. Uh, the parable about the sower who sows his seeds and the parable about wheat and weeds that grow together, for example. But most of them are one-liners. Most of them are short and to the point, and the meaning, at least to those who heard it, was probably pretty clear on the first go-round. Uh, now, a couple of thousand years later, the meaning may not be so clear. Mustard seeds are first and foremost not the smallest seed on earth, but in ancient times, the rabbis liked to use the mustard seed as an example, and Jesus following in that great rabbinic tradition, starts off his parables today with a reference to the mustard seed, smallest seed, but huge result. The mustard plant that you can find in the Middle East grows from a tiny seed to be at least 12 or 14 feet high. Pretty amazing result, the kind of thing uh, that those who heard him speaking would know. And what he's talking about is small things growing into big things. Second parable of the day is on the same theme, where something that starts small has a massive effect. In this case, it's not so visible, although it is visible in a way. The woman baking bread takes some leaven, takes the yeast lump, and puts it into a, a, a measure of flour, three measures of flour, in fact, it says, and those three measures of flour would produce bread to feed about a hundred people. It's a very, very big lump of dough that this woman is working with. Now this one, everybody knows what leaven does. Everybody knows that you can look at the dough and see it change and grow and punch it down and it grows back again. So the idea of persistence and perseverance and growth would have been clear, but the original hearers would have thought it odd that Jesus would say the kingdom of heaven is like yeast because, you may already know this, but the, the times that yeast appears in Old Testament writing, and even one example in the New Testament I'll give you here in a second, the Old Testament treats the leaven as being a source of evil and corruption. And it's going into a lump and spreading throughout would, would be a way that the ancients would have thought that evil spreads from person to person or from culture to culture or getting too close to something that's wrong. So they're seeing Jesus call leaven something very good and holy, the kingdom of God, would have got their attention. And that means Jesus is turning things upside down and changing them. And what may at first glance seem like a bad thing is in fact a very good thing. We have a parable like that. We have a saying, a proverb, one bad apple spoils the whole barrel, and that would be that Old Testament idea. But Jesus is saying the leaven that we can put out for the kingdom of heaven will touch everyone and everything. It will change the world. So those are the, the two lead-offs about small things that have tremendous effect. In our own lives, have we ever realized or perhaps in a time of of despair or frustration. We're living in a time of despair and frustration right now. We wonder what difference does it make? Patrick just talked this morning about there being nearly 400,000 people in our state alone who are in need of food. And then we can look at what Christ Church does or what a project that Terry and I are helping to get underway in Honduras to feed a few households. We're, we're working with about 80 of them or 90 households, probably 300 or 400 people in Honduras. Here we see that many every week. And you could easily throw up your hands and say, the, the, need, the need is so great. What difference does this that we're doing right here now make? What good is that? But Jesus says mustard seeds and yeast grow and grow and spread. 
And it's true, we can't touch all 400,000 people who are hungry in Texas from Christ Church, but we can touch the ones who are in front of us. We can touch the ones we see. And you can do that in your own way of seeds of goodness and wellness and health and love simply by doing the things that we've talked about in past weeks, writing a letter, calling a friend, sending a message, sending a gift, joining in this project or that to make the kingdom of heaven visible in a time when it is rough to see it. And it's rough to see it right now in lots of ways. So don't give up. Don't forget that the persistence and the spread of yeast doesn't get stopped. It's just something that goes on and may be hard to see, but creates a tremendous result. The 12 foot plant has to have that seed thrown in the ground. So those are the first two parables. Don't be discouraged. Do the small things. They tend to grow. The whole kingdom of God is taught first by one man, Jesus Christ. He draws four others in his first calling, eventually gets 12. We all know one of those didn't work out. And yet, the tree that he describes has grown to provide rest for birds of the air throughout all time and all history since. It couldn't have looked less likely to succeed than when it was one rabbi and 12 disciples. And yet here we are. Now the other two are about discipleship. The last two parables that I'm going to talk about, we're going to leave the judgment one out because that one uh, it makes people uncomfortable and I certainly don't want you changing to another channel at home. I want you to stick with me. So it is four parables. It is going to take 15 minutes though, Patrick. We have two other parables about discovering the thing of greatest value and doing whatever it takes to get it. And Jesus here is talking about the kingdom of heaven. He's talking about himself and being his disciple and how that works. You see, Christians cannot just mix in a little Jesus with the rest of their lives the way they are. They just can't uh, go on and pull Jesus off the shelf when we need him and treat him as the, the seed of the day or the yeast of the day. It's a permanent and 100% relationship. And he changes us, but he doesn't actually make us give up everything. We have to focus everything differently and see it differently. That's what he's talking about when he describes the man who finds the pearl and goes and sells it and has it above all else. He's still a pearl dealer. He's still a jeweler. And the man who finds the, the field and finds the treasure in the field is still maybe a farmer, maybe is a real estate developer, who knows? But he is still that after he buys that field. And you and I, when we become disciples of Jesus, we're still given the same gifts and the same opportunities that we've always had. But we might end up being bankers devoted to Jesus instead of devoted to ourselves and our own pursuits. We could end up being lawyers or teachers or cooks or house cleaners or you name it, whatever your business, whatever your work, your student work. It's very, very transforming to discover that Jesus can be a ruler and guide and help us pass through the things of this world so that we do not lose the things of the last. That's what that judgment parable is about, is being sure that on the day of judgment we have followed and done the right things. And we do that by treating Jesus as the pearl of great price, as the treasure in the field that we must have, and that whatever gets in the way of that has to go. Remember one of the saddest stories in the gospel is Jesus meeting the rich young man who is eager to enter the kingdom of heaven. But when Jesus says, there's only one thing left for you to do, and that is sell everything you have and give it to the poor, and then come follow me, he's not able to take that step of dedication. And that's, that's, what call, that's what the call to discipleship in Jesus is about. That's why Jesus says at the end of his teaching today, and this is something no preacher would ever really want to say to a congregation, have you understood all of this? And if you haven't understood it, I can preach the sermon again. That's when all the hands go up and say, preacher, I got it. I'm good. Let's go. But what he's saying is scribes, 
or lawyers, or bankers, or teachers, or homemakers, or mothers, fathers, grandfathers, trained for the kingdom of heaven are the same people they were, but they see the world differently and they live no longer for themselves, but for Jesus and his work and his righteousness and his justice. That's what the kingdom of heaven produces, is people who are changed. It happens with small beginnings. It happens with individual Christians going to others and planting seeds and doing good work and introducing leavening and making people into something they never expected. That is how we pass through things temporal, the things of this world, and never lose the things that are eternal. God bless you all. Amen.